everyone. My name is Jesse Kim. Hello, my name is Jesse uh, yeah. I am running yeah. for Port of Seattle Commissioner position five. Uh, I have been a resident of Seattle for about uh, 40 years. Spent about 30 some years in the banking world and also spent a lot of time in the international trade investment. Uh, there are several major focus on my uh, interest in my campaign. I believe the economy right now is a major turning point for us after the pandemic. I think we need to find some way to improve our uh, economy for redevelopment. Number two, I think the port uh, for the past uh, decades, a lot of financial accountability issues uh, keep coming up. I think it's time for us to really watch out for our fiscal responsibility to make sure our port operations and management uh, working effectively. The over Uncontrollable cost overrun on capital improvement project uh, should not be a normal situation, should not be acceptable. And then next, next uh, priority for me is transparency. Uh, we shouldn't be finding out all the issues after um, several years. Uh, issues should be coming up as soon as they come up in our, uh, in our portal operation. So the constituents, the, the, the residents here, to have a chance to uh, uh, recognizing the issues which we all share. And last but not least, I think the port has a lot of social accountability, social responsibility that we need to watch out for. Our environment, our educational program, our job training, and most important, keep our neighbors uh, safely uh, living and working in this uh, region. Uh, for that, I am running for Port of Seattle Commissioner, position five. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you. Um, so, um, so our first question, okay, uh, th thank you for posting that. Um, uh, Shep Slusky will ask our first question. Gates at the new international terminal at SeaTac were not designed to be large hmm. enough to be intended planes. How did this happen? And how will you pre prevent this sort of problem from occurring in future projects? This particular situation has been around for quite some time. The airport expansion started out in 2013 with a contract of uh, roughly around $348 million and with a budget or schedule to complete uh, by 2018. And by 2018, they didn't finish the job and the budget at that time or the cost overrun to about $600 million. And four years later, 2022, the expansion finally opened and the final bill came to about $1 billion. And there's several hundred million dollars uh, uh, in dispute somehow with the contractor, their lawsuit going on. And uh, most recently, uh, there are news coming up regarding the design faults that only uh, 16 out of the 20 airplane store are usable. I think these are all major issues and that we need to address. With that, it comes back to one or two major issues. The commission should have caught the contract issues from the very day one, 10 years ago. Uh, the design build contract, which allow the contractor to build whatever they want to design and build is an open book, check, open checkbook uh, that could have a lot of potential for cost overrun, totally um, mismanaged, miscalculated. And at this point, the project is not finished, even with a billion dollar bill. I still have potential 78 more million dollars to re uh, repair the uh, parking store for the airplane. And another hundred million dollars roughly for the lawsuit going on. So to prevent this, we must control those contracts from the very beginning. It is support and a senior management of the port to manage the contract and negotiate properly with the contractor. Um, yeah. And that will be able to make sure the contract signed properly before the job begin. So we yeah. don't have the same problem going yeah. forward. Okay, thank, uh, thank you. Um, okay, so um, next, uh, next question. Um, 
Number two, I believe, Amanda, you are mm -hmm. asking this one. Much of the port's core economic activities cause huge externalities and other environmental impacts, especially on low-income, immigrant, and Black, Indigenous, people of color communities. How do you propose we, to make the port less damaging to the environment and more economically equitable? Thank you, Amanda. This question comes down to social responsibility. We, the port, a public, is a public entity, the people who serve on the port commission as well as staff, senior staff, are responsible for the social environment of the port's operation. So that means we have to make sure all our projects have our neighbors in mind. It's not something we can just go ahead and build based on economic reason. Oftentimes there are something study have to be done properly before the contract or the project started. And there are a lot of issues associated with that directly and indirectly. I had good conversation with the Wamis River uh, Community Coalition. I had uh, talked to a lot of people in the south end of the airport, a uh, few of the cities most recently filed a, classic, a, a class action lawsuit. And those are all concerned about the pollution issues that the port should take responsibility of it. But before just before the cleanup, we better start thinking about whatever we decide is something affecting our neighbors. So with that in mind, we'll keep our health people healthy, make sure they have got good education to understand what might be affecting them. So they have been able to maintain the economic equity along the way. And uh, going forward, after all, this is a big community. We all live together. We all want uh, Puget Sound to uh, last forever for our next generation. Mm -hmm. okay, thank you. Um, so third question is now in the chat. Uh, Brittany, would you like to ask that one? All right. Um, so the Green Cruise Corridor may eventually reduce the enormous climate impact of cruise ships, but science tells us we need to reduce emissions now. So how will you measure life cycle greenhouse gas emissions on the whole Alaska cruise route by next year? And how will you ensure that zero emissions are achieved by 2040? Well, this is a loaded question, but uh, as a lawn scientist, my knowledge and my investigation, my study come up with the uh, a good ideas about that. Uh, I enjoy the cruise ship going to Alaska, but along the way we have a lot of beautiful environments. We got to find some way to protect protect those environments. The global warming is the issues that we are facing, and with that we're also recognizing fossil fuel is the number one source right now causing the pollutions and environmental impacts negatively uh, with, with the whole entire regions. We uh, need to find some resources and energy source to minimize the, 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 the air pollution and the carbon dioxide coming out from those uh, engines. Uh, one of the good uh, substitute for that is uh, find some way for immediately utilizing something like natural gas to minimize the emissions caused by the fossil fuels. We also should look at other source of renewable energy going forward in the future so we can meet the mandate in the next 10, 20 years, which we all eventually have to pay for. So that means it comes down to the port operation. We have to operate our port effectively, smoothly, so we can generate the, the financial capacity to help those who are working together with us, such as the cruise ship company, such as the terminals, such as all the workers associated with uh, uh, the cruise ship operation, all of them are affected by the same subject matter. So this is a challenge. We all have to work together. That means uh, we take the leadership as a port and to initiate a program to make sure we minimize um, the pollution, promoting green energy going forward. Yeah. Time. Thank you. Thank you. And we have uh, one more question um, It is now in the chat. Uh, Barbara, would you like to ask this one? Yes, thank you. Um, the truckers who transport containers to and from the port 
are independent contractors and low wage workers. These workers often cannot afford trucks that are low polluters. As a port commissioner, what will you do to address the low wages of these workers? What will you do to address the pollution emitted by the trucks these uh, drivers are using? In the past few months, I have been talking to a lot of independent trucking logistic companies in the regions. A few things came to my mind and, and I gathered those knowledge. Um, and I'm very pleased to know that they are very good workers, uh, continue to support our operation. They're facing the challenges to improve their trucks because their mandate to find some way to minimize their uh, fossil fuels uh, burning capacity to find some way to create a cleaner trucks operation. The federal government has some funding to help them to buy new trucks but there are a lot of concern regarding the station. They can use the charge of trucks. They're concerned about the time they have to charge the truck without moving the cargo because they make money by moving the cargoes, not parking there to charge. And worst of all, their location, their lots, uh, the rents are you keep increasing either to be uh, the leases be terminated by, by our port operation and then, and uh, or the rents have keep increasing, uh, that keep them, uh, make them a very, put them in a very difficult challenging position. So with that in mind, I think we have a common goal eventually to make sure our truckers are taken care of, make sure our air pollution is, uh, problem is uh, reduced to the level that we can handle, and also making sure they're gonna be surviving because without them, we're not gonna have people to move our cargo around. So it comes down to number one, the port has to play a leadership to make sure those truckers can operate in a safe, in an effective energy level that they can generate reason uh, return on the investment. 10 seconds. The, the worker must get paid properly so they, can, they don't have to compete. I mean, they don't have to compete with the union workers. So everybody can concentrate for the benefit of the port. Time. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, those are our prepared questions. Um, I guess we can now open this up uh, for follow-ups. Um, and we have about eight minutes remaining for follow-ups. Uh, does anybody uh, have a follow-up ready? Um, they'd like to ask. Amanda. Yeah, so this is a, a follow up on one uh, on the, the first question about mm -hmm. uh, what what could be done to prevent this sort of problem occurring. And uh, you mentioned, you know, from the beginning, making sure that the contract is right and starting uh, starting off correctly. Um, I'm wondering about projects that are in in flight, so to speak. Uh, how do you adjust and address things that change during the course of those projects, especially when it's a 10 year project? Um, effectively so that once you've started out on a course, uh, maybe the wrong course from the beginning, how do you adjust uh, as you go through? Very good, Amanda, the, for these questions. I know that that contract already signed a long time ago and is ongoing. Uh, one of the contracts will be starting this year, the Concord C for the airport expansion. Uh, we need to review those contracts carefully to make sure they are make sure the port is protected, make sure the workers are protected. Uh, so we look at all parties involved in it. Uh, we cannot let any particular party take over control of the port uh, contract. And particularly, we cannot allow to have a, a open checkbook, you know, to go forward. We make sure our contract going to be on schedule, keep it on a budget, and follow through. It's a day-to-day -day things, you know, it's not something we can just have a quick fix. I know we need to go in there and start maintaining that. If not, all our future improvement, all our budget will never be satisfied to us. So, so it's an ongoing thing, communication openly among all the parties. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, thank you. Uh, does any, um, do we have any more follow-ups? Um, nobody else has when I have a follow-up. Um, Okay, um, you had mentioned uh, in the um, in the answer uh, to question three um, that um, possible alternative fuels 
and you had specifically mentioned um, natural gas. So um, I know that uh, natural, I mean, natural gas is also a fossil fuel, as um, as we all know, and um, that you know, how do we with that with that in mind, how do we um, use that to get to zero emissions by 2040? Thank you, Jeremy. Uh, actually, I have more to respond to that particular question. Yes, you're absolutely correct. Natural gas is a uh, is a, is natural gas. You know, it come from a limited sources. It's not uh, renewable. Uh, it's limited supply. Eventually, we'll use up all the natural gas. Uh, we have to take it out from the ground to do so. But it substantially reduces the emissions, uh, carbon uh, uh, monoxide, uh, in a, in a, in a huge portions. Uh, it's a quick solution, but it's not a sustainable long-term solution. The other energy source we must look into, uh, something like uh, the solar, the windmill, the hydro energy, the tidal energy, geothermal energy, other biomass energy, all those are going to be options to us, but that takes time to meet the mandate of the timeline. So we have to be patient to work together to uh, meet the deep. Mm -hmm. okay, thank you, uh, Barbara. Thank you. Um, Jesse, you, um, you sound like you're raring to go on this. And I would like to ask you uh, to share with us some of your background, your work background, project manager, background experience that is most related to uh, the port is huge and it's a working you know it's a kit of huge working parts could you uh, share with us what your most significant experience is to um, uh, sit in this position what would you bring I'll try to do it in one minute and number one I'm born and raised in a city called Hong Kong it's a very densely populated city I'm not far from the port where I was used to live. I love to go to the airport, stand around looking at all the passengers passing by, all the excitements of the economies in Hong Kong. It's a global city. I love watching all the container ship in and out the Hong Kong port, which is one of the top biggest one in the, in the world. More important, I also suffocated a lot by the Hong Kong pollutions. I understand how important the environment to us. Those are part of my personal reason. I spent 40 years in finance management, international trade. I travel around the world. I've seen good and bad of all this operation. I want to contribute it, those knowledges, those personal experiences going forward. Second. Thank you. At the time I retire, but I want to do something about that. It's an exciting time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Do we have any more questions? Any more follow-up questions? Um, if, uh, if nobody else does, I actually want to follow up to my follow-up. Um, Thank you, Jeremy. I think that's allowed. Um, so you you had you had mentioned a lot of um, a lot of um, energy sources for um, that you can use for electricity generation. Uh, you know, I mean, uh, um, you know, solar, wind. Um, obviously, you can't use geothermal while you're on a boat. Um, how? Um, so, um, so that that in mind, I mean, how do those fit into um, actually operating these cruises? You know, aside from at the shore, which I which I, I guess the shore is part of it, but um, yeah, how how do those all fit in? Uh, Currently, the port is doing a lot of study about the same subject because much of the corridor up and down between here and Alaska is, you know, we want to do the best we can to maintain the environment, but it's a huge stress of land and water. The concentration of the port terminal for the cruise ship parked there for those one day could cause a lot of pollutions to our downtown region area. There's a time to find some way to make sure we can turn off those engines rather than idling, because if they're idling, they maintain the power for the cruise ship, for the passengers, the, or the operation, they create a lot of the 
bad air in our, our, in our environment. So looking for a way to put in the electrical terminal, plug it in, let's stop this pollution as soon as possible. I think we have plenty of opportunity to grow our cruise ship business going forward. Thank you. Um, see, so we are at 125 now. So I think we are at our 20 minutes. Um, um, I guess, um, so uh, yeah, thank you for interviewing with us. Um, we can probably stop recording now. Um, <laughs>